I'm about to get in trouble, literally, because remember the other day on a video on my Instagram, I told you ask forgiveness, not permission live action. So I'm down here at Mace Supermarket. Used to work on the refrigeration down here and stuff. And I got to kind of know the butchers. Refrigeration guy always knows the good meat cutters. Think I'm going to go get some ribs and my wife don't know about it. So anyway, that's the forgiveness part. But I know she'll forgive me because I'm going to cook her some ribs that she'll never forget. I got some blackberry jelly that my mom and I made. I'm very excited to put, uh, put blackberries on these ribs today, like blackberry jelly and glaze them, right? And some something for heat. I'm excited. Anyway, pay attention, because I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. We're walking inside. You gotta be quiet so she don't hear us. So I got me a whole case of spares here. They look really good. A lot of marble. One more thing I almost forgot. We gotta get some uh, tiger sauce. Here you go. Tiger sauce. Well, I made it out of there alive. I'm gonna put this stuff in the truck. We're gonna head back to the house. All right guys, I went down and got those ribs. I'm in my garage here at the house today. It's Sunday. The beer fridge is right there, so I'm close by it. Right now I'm getting the 2040 lit up here in the driveway. That's the Smoker Builder Manufacturing 2040 Hybrid. I'm gonna cook in uh, offset mode with the tuning plates. But I'm gonna go through here a little list of stuff that you should have while you're doing this. Again, all these items are not necessarily required, but these are the ones that I like to use. Gotta have an apron, right? It says Smoker Builder on it, that's awesome. Today we're gonna cook some Smithfield ribs. These are the Pitmasters uh, Preferred Series. Of course, everybody knows that ribs are not cheap right now, but you buy them by the case, you get a better deal typically. A couple of knives that I use, I always have like a big old chef's knife. This is good for just cu cutting through bone or anything like that that you got to do like cartilage or whatever. And I always keep a boning knife around. It's got a flexible blade on it so that you can kind of pry it, push down against the you know cutting board or whatever. I'm gonna glaze with blackberry jelly. My base layer is gonna be TD's Brewing Barbecue. We're using the Carne Sutra today. I really like this rub. It's like a buttery, uh, kind of a Southwest kind of a S SPG. And then later on, after we glaze, I've got some uh, habanero, mango habanero uh, finishing rub that we're just gonna lightly sprinkle on top. When we wrap, we're gonna use uh, butter. I got the old Land of Lakes here, brown sugar, and then Johnny Trigg always used to use this tiger sauce in his rib recipe. I really like that. And I'll be right back and I'm gonna show you how I trim up these St. Louis, these uh, full spare ribs into St. Louis ribs. All right guys, so this is a slab of spare ribs here. And what happens is, is whenever they're butchering a hog, you'll see that it's got a cut right here, like it was cut on a bandsaw. So whenever they're butchering this up, they cut this off. They got the loin back ribs. They can make chops out of that. They can make a pork loin. That's why this is the spare ribs. Anyway, when you flip this over, we got this big chine bone here. So we're usually gonna cut that off if we're gonna cook these because we're gonna trim this down to be like St. Louis ribs. Now you've got this little piece right here. This is like a brisket kind of a piece. I'm just gonna cut this along the top of those bones. You can save that and put it in sausage or you can cook it and put it in beans, whatever you want there. Now we can see the ends of these bones. You can see a knuckle right there. You're gonna pick out the tallest one and you're gonna cut a nice straight line all the way across here. That's what I use the chef's knife for. So now we've got this nice rectangle what looks more like a St. Louis slab of ribs that you would get at the store. So what I like to do is I'll come back some and make this a more reasonably sized slab of ribs. I'll cut some of this off. So when you get out in here, you got these little tiny bones. If you don't wanna like just pick a spot that you like, like I like about right here. That's so now we've got this piece of membrane here and we gotta get rid of that. A good handy thing to have is a paper towel. You can kind of pick at the end of this and the paper towel gives you some something to grab with and you can pull. Okay guys, so now we're gonna season these ribs. Uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier is you ought to have some oil or mustard or something. This is a little bit of peanut oil, I kinda like that. It's gonna give us something for the rub to bind to. You can use olive oil, there's no wrong answers. I'm rubbing the top side here first. 
I'm going to flip it over. And I actually start on the back side with my rub. Keep your towel handy, wipe your hands off. What we're going to do first is put our carne sutra on. I use the wide end on these usually because there's uh, there's other stuff in there that I want to come out. I don't want the, the holes to kind of keep it from coming out of there with the rest of the rub. But you'll notice I kind of keep it tilted and I shake. This is going to give us kind of a buttery sort of a salt and pepper and garlic kind of a flavor. And then I take my hand and I kind of push on that rub to help kind of get it started on its sweating process. And I'm gonna just put just a little more oil on there. The Sweet Barbecue Love is gonna give us our uh, color. It's gonna kind of do the same thing here. A little tip, we're gonna add sugar later once we wrap and we're gonna push that in. Okay, now we're gonna flip these over. Just kind of spritz that down just a little bit. And that'll help kind of get that rub starting to wet. That's called emulsify which will speed up the sweating process. So the cooker's running about 300 degrees. You know, I'm gonna try to knock it down just a little bit. I like these ribs to run on a stick burner somewhere around 275 to 300. All right, guys, it's time to wrap. Um, I've rotated the ribs this way a couple of times, but I haven't flipped them over because I want that juice to sit up on top and I uh, want my color to be right whenever I'm cooking. What I did is I checked the temperature with my thermopan. We're running right at about 170 degrees real quick. So I'm gonna walk over here to the cooker and uh, show you what these ribs look like. And then I'll bring them over here and wrap them. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some butter and some sugar down. I usually use about four pats on the bottom. All right, now we're gonna put a little bit of sugar on there. Now we're gonna put a little bit of tiger sauce down. I just drizzle a little bit right down the middle like that. I mean, look at that. We're gonna set these on here, top side down, bones up. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put four pats of butter on the here. Oh my gosh. That was pitmaster privilege there. Lick my fingers like that. Now I got two layers of, of foil per rack of ribs here. What I like to do is pull the tops up like this. When I get them up here like this, I'm going to fold that over. I pinch the ends, but be careful not to tear the foil and then just fold that over. And we're gonna pull up the other layer of foil here. I use two layers of foil in case that inside layer gets torn or has a hole in it. All right, now that slab can go back on. All right, guys, ribs have been on the cooker now for about an hour uh, wrapped. So I'm gonna pull them out. We're just gonna take a quick look at them and see what they look like. You can take a bone and kind of grab it and twist a little bit. And if it looks like it's twisting in the meat a little bit, then you know you're there, almost there. What we're looking for in this case is tenderness, not appearance. We're going to put the ribs back on the cooker here and let them have a few minutes more to get tender. Another way you can check is if you take your thermopin, fold the point open, and you can just kind of poke it. Use a toothpick, use this, and you can feel just by poking like that on the back side that these ribs are just perfect. So I've got this extra pan here. I'm going to dump the juice into this pan. I'm going to reuse some of that juice here in just a second. So we're going to take this slab of ribs and just kind of unfold them using the foil to kind of help us here a little bit. Well, they look great. You can see they got great tenderness just by looking at them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this juice and I'm going to just baste the top with all them flavors that we have here. Now we're just going to set this whole thing back in the cooker here for just a little bit. And, and then in a minute, we're going to glaze them. Okay, so these ribs have been in the cooker here long enough to kind of start to set the skin up a little bit. Now I've got this blackberry jelly, heated it up in the microwave a little bit with a little bit of water in it just to kind of thin it down. We're just going to go ahead and just kind of dab this on there. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I'm not going to worry about flipping these over and getting the bottom side. We're just going to work on this one side. Okay, I got the TD's Brewing Barbecue Habanero Honey Mango. Just want to just barely dust the top of that. We don't want a lot of heat. Oh, that's enough right there. Okay, so that's gonna be like a finishing dust on top of that sweet. These things are gonna be insane. Okay, I'm gonna go set them back on the cooker and set the sauce for just a second. Oh my gosh, look at that. I mean, now that is some color. All right, I'm gonna cut into one of these bad boys and I'm gonna eat it right in front of you. Look at that. That's a perfectly cooked rib. My gosh, that's got some flavor. That jelly and the honey habanero mango are like made for each other. 
I can taste that tiger sauce, that little bit of heat on that second layer. Then we get down into that buttery salt and pepper and garlic, kind of Southwest seasoning of the carne sutra. Guys, I'm telling you, this is a bang up recipe. I'm very, very happy. So spare ribs cut St. Louis style. We did the carne sutra from TD's Brewing Barbecue as our base layer. We used a little bit of peanut oil as a binder, which helped us get this color. We put on a layer of the sweet barbecue love. We put it on the cooker and smoked it with cherry wood on the 2040 offset from Smoker Builder Manufacturing. Then uh, once we pulled it off, we wrapped with butter, brown sugar, and uh, tiger sauce. That gave us another layer of sweet and heat on top of that salty, that little bit of salt. Then once we got up in here, and uh, pulled them out of the wrap. We glazed them with the juice from the wrap. We just kind of mopped them around a little bit. We set them on, on the cooker for a little bit just to get that layer, that, that layer effect that we wanted. Then we pulled back out and we mopped it down with some of this blackberry jelly that I made. I'm telling you guys, it is awesome. Then put that little dust of that honey mango gives it just the right amount of heat. So anyway, try it yourself, see what you think, let me know. By the way, be paying attention because I'm always launching all kinds of cool giveaways and different kinds of uh, special offers on things that I like. If you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks! I'm going to eat another bite. This is good. I should have went over there and got a beer.